all getting a wee bit messy as we get to the end of the F1 season as Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton's title battle is bending the rules, breaking the rules, getting towards a limit. It all just needs to calm down a little bit. So we're going to be talking now this week about the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. My name is Colin and I'm joined as always by Nick. Hello. And by Tom. Hello. Who's struggling this week? Just a little bit, little bit cold, so apologies if there's any sniffles or coughs. I'll survive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first ever for Saudi Arabian Grand Prix at the Jeddah Corniche. Yeah. I always, I always want to say Corneto, but I don't know why. Yeah. The Corniche circuit. Just reminds me of a Rolls Royce. I think that was a, that was a Rolls Royce Corniche. <laughs> There was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we've got a th- we've got a fourth presenter here. Yeah, <laughs> he's on guard duty. Hey, yeah, Perrick. Yeah. So, <laughs> fortunately, we need to start this week with a bit of sad news. Uh, uh, so Frank Williams passed away last weekend when we were off at seventy nine year old. I think mm-hmm. it was quite a big loss. There was a one minute silence before it. There were various different highlight videos over the weekend posted about him. George's helmet. Yeah. And I think some of the teams, I don't even know if all of the teams ran some sort of tribute to him on it. They all did, yeah. Very sad. I mean, it's very uh, unfortunate timing. He'd only just exited at Formula 1, really, uh, a year and a bit ago. And, yeah, he was clearly had a very large impact on the Formula 1 team. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it is sad, but he is a true legend mm-hmm. of the sport. And as the often said in a lot of the coverage he was uh, one of a kind and we'll never see anyone like him again yeah he lived and breathed it didn't he mm. uh, it must have been actually pretty difficult for him to step away last year um, well yeah I mean Claire's been running the team for quite a long time that's true he was still the official um, can't think of the word now director owner principal <laughs> that's the word thank you <laughs> yeah she was officially the deputy wasn't she but yeah. she yeah. was running the team yeah yeah, but yeah. Sad times, and he will not be forgotten. And I hope next year Williams no. has a good season. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've had a great, great year this year, so you know he was able to see an upturn in form at least. That's true. Yeah, he got to see like the good results mm-hmm. from Russell and Latifi earlier in the year. Yep, a, a podium. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. As well, which was a bit of a shock, can't imagine. Yeah. So that was that was sad news that came out. It's a bit of the old guard. Getting away now. Yeah. So back to the first ever Saudi Arabian Grand Prix at the Corniche Circuit. Do you, were the colour of the Aston Martin Safety America cars changed for this race? Yes, they were the official Saudi green. I thought so. I thought, oh, they had this special metallic green. You could buy the road car version, the F1 edition mm-hmm. in that green. The game always added it in that green. Then we got here and, oh, hang on, they've changed it. But I suppose it was just for this one round, was it? That's right. Yes. Yeah, it was to match, I presume, the colour of the flag, but it's the yeah. official Saudi Arabia oh, green. Okay. Because I was struggling at first. I thought, whoa, hang on a minute. This is the TV settings all weird. I just <laughs> coincidentally bought a new television recently, so I was like, oh, my word. <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, there was something very unusual that happened this weekend as well, and that is that I tweeted. Did wow. you? Yes, didn't get replied, but I tweeted Sky Sports. Did you? Oh. Yeah, because I want to know why Jeddah is called a street circuit when it was built and designed as a racetrack. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> and I don't know the answer. No one seems to know. Yes. From what I've looked well, at. there's no streets were used in the making of it, right? Yeah. I said unless it's going to become streets afterwards. Well, apparently it might not be used for very long. Yes, because they're building a whole new complex somewhere, aren't they? Yeah, even regardless of its... Um questionable performance yeah, uh, and layout. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. Well, I suppose they're calling it street circuit because there's there's concrete lying in every corner, right? Yeah. On the outside of the, the runoffs, there's just, there's just walls. But yeah, it's not really a street circuit. It's more of a, well, it's industrial park circuit. <laughs> what, what was it built on? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There was an outer road that was there, which is still there. Right. Um, but yeah, the rest of it was just built up from scratch. Not a street circuit, you just call it circuit then. Yeah. But yeah, it was just a little thing that was annoying me. I enjoyed it. I found your tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Liked it. Someone did. <laughs> <laughs> they kept calling it a mixture of Silverstone and Monaco. It's not. Weekend. It's neither. No. <laughs> it's not even close. 
No. No. It's like a mixture of Valencia and Singapore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bit of Korea in there as well. Yeah. All the worst bits. <laughs> the, the, the track did look fun to drive, rubbish to race. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. It's the fast corners are fun with this mm. rule set of cars, right? With that. So yeah. Bottas had a good time in free practice, didn't he? Yeah. But it just doesn't work as a Formula 1 venue, is my overall opinion. I know it was no. very exciting, but, it, but pro- for, probably for the wrong re- reasons. Mm. Someone probably wouldn't said that about Monaco, right? Monaco is the worst thing in the world to watch. But it's during somehow, the race, it's but somehow. during qualifying, it's great. Mm. Yeah, the actual race is mm, well. How many exciting Monaco races have there been in the last decade? Um, yeah, ninety six was the last one, and that's not in the decade. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a pretty. I've not tried it in the game yet, but it looked it looked a bit plain. You know, like yeah, there's no yeah, features yeah. or but, elevation. Yeah, yeah. There's the one little banked corner, but I can imagine driving those cars. It'd be, it'd be great. You mentioned practice, actually. A couple of incidents for practice. Charles Leclerc, binned it in the wall. Mm. Seemed a pretty common thing over the weekend for Ferrari. Unstable rear end. Mm. Good for those sections. And Lewis Hamilton got away with two infractions. One, he didn't slow down for a double-waved yellow, but it turned yeah. out a Marshall... I pressed a button for a second mm-hmm. and took it away, so to let him off with that one. And then he got a reprimand for. He blocked two cars in the one lap. I think he blocked an Alpha Tower and then he really badly blocked Mazepin. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and he got, a reprimand, he got a reprimand for the Mazepin one. And uh, afterwards he thanked Nikita on Instagram for not hitting him and, and ruining his championship. <laughs> yeah. But again, you, you can't really blame the driver. He's got to be told. Yeah. I think on Sky Sports, on the coverage on that, it was, uh, they were constantly going on about how you weren't allowed to slow down in certain sectors of the track. And there was such like, well, why can't it be the whole track? Yeah. And I can see the point, just have a minimum speed. Is that a street circuit? really cruise around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you weren't allowed to slow down the last sector. I think it was like between 23 and 27, and then in mm. Q1, everyone slowed down. And kind of a massive traffic jam, so... Which which yeah. is one of the main bugbears with the circuit, right? Is that the visit, it's hard, oh, it's not good for when people are slowing down on trying to get laps in qualifying and practice and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But the, neither is any sort of close, confined venue. I didn't say no. street circuit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, every corner is blind. Mm. You, yeah. you can't see the next one. Because of the wall way, so yeah, there was there was concerns before the race that was, this would be really unsafe. Um, and throughout the weekend, F two was a disaster. Every race had daft crashes and incidents at the start, and a particularly nasty one in the feature race where Enzo Fittipaldi went in the back of Oscar Piastri at the start because Piastri stalled. And it's a typical not street circuit, but extremely narrow. People just diving around the park car, couldn't see them. So yeah, they're, they're talking about changing it next year, but I don't know what they can change other than move the walls, and then you kind of lose yeah. the whole point of it. We could go to Mugello instead. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you could. Yeah, get those um, things that you get on bumper cars that stick up so they can see through the uh, fencing. <laughs> Big flag on top. Yeah, yeah. So qualifying Q one, the usual suspects really, apart from. Both Aston Martins ended up going out this week, mm. which was a bit of a shocker. Alf, both Alfa Romeo's had a good weekend, and uh, George Russell got through to Q2, but Vettel and Stroll were, were terrible. I mean, Stroll was only a tenth quicker than Mick Schumacher. Oof. Yeah, that car does not seem to suit this sort of track, and in general, the Astons have been relatively slow for the last few events. Yeah, and then we had that massive traffic jam at the end of Q1 which stopped Max getting in his final lap but he was already through so I don't think anyone got pulled up for it Q2 was Carol Sainz who had a big moment oh yes through the same corner was it the same corner that, that was Clark spun uh, no I think no, no, it, was no it wasn't yeah it was 10 11 or 12 I think it was I don't know. that's 20, that's 27 isn't it? <laughs> yeah <laughs> so 506 yeah they all look the same to me so he lost the rear, thought he had saved it, but then his, his rear wing just clipped it. the yeah. barrier. Unfortunately. 
bent the end plate. He gave it another go and it's almost done the exact same thing the next <laughs> lap. Yeah. So he was he was out fifteenth. Uh, Alonso, pretty poor qualifying. He didn't make it through, but your boy Antonio Giovinazzi got through. Mm. Brilliant performance. Too little, too late. But out qualified Ricardo and Alonso. Can't be both. No. Uh, both have Darius for Q3 again. Sergio Perez was fifth behind Charles Leclerc, and it was a Lewis Hamilton for to process one two. But Max had pole in the bag, essentially. He was pulling out an incredible lap before he locked up in the final hairpin and smashed a barrier with his right rear wheel, mm-hmm. which completely shattered, I think, his suspension and drive shaft. Yeah, he was lucky not to do more damage, but it was a, quite a small mistake that led to a big problem. Yeah, it was also very lucky not to bin it at turn two, though. Did you see how close it yeah. was to the ba- barrier? <laughs> yes. It was like, holy Indeed. cow. And then he actually had a little wiggle round, I don't know, one of the corners. <laughs> before the thing so he was but then he but he was still purple two tenths up so he was like wow mm. and that Alonso clip that you shared uh, was it you Colin where he's being interviewed by Ziggo mm. he's just, yeah he's oh, watching that's it the like. best he's like oh right he's two tenths up so we can carry the interview then he's got it and then mm. and then they crashes it first crack really shown from Max because he was I think by that point they were even saying he was over three tenths up mm. in the final corner he walked up and then tried to save it Rather than just backing out. Yeah, because if you had have just sort of backed out and then carried on, he may still have been that far ahead that he still set a quicker time. But he tried to hold on to it all the way around. I suppose we'll never know, but... No. Unfortunate mistake. Still lined up third, though, which was lucky that he had the banker Mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, and lucky not to break anything internally either, Mm. like the engine or the gearbox. It's the first kind of mistake we've seen from Max, so a so, bit of pressure on him, and he made an error. Mm. And he looked devastated after the race. Yeah. Well, he stormed off the podium, didn't he? After qualifying, I mean, sorry. Oh. Yeah, race, race as well, yeah. <laughs> do we do that again? He looked devastated no, no. after qualifying. He did. <laughs> race? Uh, was it? Now, here's the thing. Was it a race? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about this. <clears throat> yes, it was a race. I'm being facetious. When Hamilton was catching up for Verstappen, that was the real bit that was interesting for me. Mm. Uh, that was the only part of the race. The rest of it was just a, coll- a collation of incidents. Mm-hmm. It never really flowed. It was off. It was on. It was in the barriers, repairing the barriers. It was a safety car. It was who knows what Kimi Raikkonen was thinking. And it was just mm. a bit of a mess. And... Yeah, there was only th- like this 10, 15, 20 lap period where, the, for me, there was actual racing going on, really. Mm. But reg- after the fact, I think we both all think it's a bit uh, a bit too far. In the moment, it was exciting, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was, there were exciting incidents. It wasn't an exciting race. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of interesting moments, but not necessarily what we want to say. No. And... Uh, I know some non-Formula 1 fans that watched it and they were just like, what is going on? Mm. Like they couldn't understand all the chaos and drama that that was yeah. going on and the stewards and they were, they were like, is this what it's normally like? I'm like well, not really. It doesn't it's help just... that when everyone's watching it that there's all these rules and non-rules and confusion. Mm. Mm. But I wrote what is going on at one point down in my notes while I was watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My better half, Lisa, she thinks she's got a good theory that if, you know, someone at Liberty Media has gone in Max Verstappen's ear and gone, right, you're going to be a bit slower this weekend. But if you get the lead, <laughs> behave like an idiot and create good drama and then it'll be level points going into the finale. How about that? British Touring yeah. style. I mean, uh, just, you know, like, like a film. <laughs> I'll edit that out so we don't get a, a legal letter through the door. <laughs> <laughs> The guy was going to drive around to my house in his Rolls Royce. Tell me off. <laughs> yeah. Race start. Nothing much to say to start. Mercedes kept to positions. And it looked pretty pretty easy for them. I thought that that's race over at that point. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, Cheers, lap Mick. nine. Yeah, Mick loses the rear. Oh, yeah. It was quite innocent, to be honest. It didn't look like he'd done anything wrong. The rear just went at the same corner that Leclerc mm-hmm. spun in practice. 
find it the tech pro barrier safety car deployed my instant thought was that'll be a red flag when i saw the crash but they went for safety car first and then well if, in, in f2 if there was a crash it was a red flag uh, i didn't yeah. have that context at the time yeah, yeah that was the precedence for it wasn't it yeah it's just like we can't do anything about this it needs to be a red flag just because the way the circuit is mm-hmm. so they put out the safety car for about four laps both mercedes pit bottas backed for stapping up so that they could double stack the Mercedes, which isn't yeah. allowed, but nothing happened with that. Weird one. And then uh, after both Mercedes pit, there's a red flag, which means that everyone that didn't pit now gets a free mm-hmm. change of tyres in the pit lane. Why didn't is... Max pit? That's what I don't understand. I think they were just playing the game in that. Banking on a red flag. Was, um, yeah, because they'd seen what had happened in the F2. Clever, Clever if that's the um, case. The barrier apparently was punctured as well, and it had to be replaced. Oh. On one part of the tech pro, that is. Mm. But they didn't know that when they called the red flag. They had to inspect it to find that out. I see. Interesting. There's a lot of drivers lost that way. Norris ended up the back of the pack, yeah. basically. Orlando. His, yeah. his post race video was interesting. Oh, funny. Mm. Oh, what a wonderful day. Or something like that. <laughs> but it just it sparked a debate again about these red flags. Should you be able to change tyres in the pit lane? What would you That's go for, Colin? Safe... Well, this is. It comes and goes because it benefited Hamilton back in was it Imola? Mm-hmm. He binned it, and then Russell went and crashed inside the Bottas half a minute later. Um, so the, people begin and lose throughout the season. But to me, if you go if you deploy a safety car and then a red flag, to me the fairest way to do it would be like a count back to when the safety car was deployed and set the grid that way. But mm. if you if you change it, you're going to you're going to hurt the people who are gambling and trying to go long and then you advantage the people that did come in and change the tyres and I, I don't know what's fairer but the, the current one does seem a bit unfair well my view on it would be that yes they can change tyres but it doesn't count towards your mandatory pit stop ah mm. right yeah 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 that's a good way so the people who have pitted beforehand have already had their pit stop yes they get the advantage of fresh tyres but they still have to stop again yeah makes sense Nick for president. <laughs> or as we talked today, Prime Minister probably. Yeah. <laughs> you got any Christmas parties booked? <laughs> had ours. Yeah, I, I already had it in, uh, last summer. <laughs> uh, we had ours on Zoom last year. It was great. <laughs> was we got it? a hamper delivered. Oh, that's cool. Put a crate of beer delivered. Nice. Just sat nice. drunk on Zoom. It was great. <laughs> how many had to go out for a Christmas party this year? I'm comfier when I'm sat on my couch. <laughs> yeah. Lewis uh, complained that Max did a practice start in the pit lane. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, when they came out for the red flag lap to the grid, which we'll also get to. Um, yeah, he said Max has done a practice start in the pit lane. He was complaining about that. And then Max started complaining that Lewis was more than 10 cars behind. <laughs> it just seems a little bit that. Handbags. Just get on with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the whole red flag thing is fairly new. For F1 because mm. we never had it before until last year or the year before. There was maybe like three red flags in like 10 years. But all of a sudden it's, it's now actually a tool that's used so nobody really knows the rules I don't think. As you just said with the Hamilton thing. Mm. Yeah. It's not a formation lap so he's allowed to do it at once. Which seems a bit wrong. Yeah, exactly. It seems like a wrong rule but if that's the rule, play the game. The restart, Hamilton got a great start. Up the inside the Max, take the lead in turn one, but Max decides to come off the brakes, round the outside, and goes off the track and rejoins. Rejoins in a manner which forces Hamilton to brake and swerve and allows Ocon up into second. So Max keeps the lead by effectively cutting the corner, mm-hmm. and Hamilton loses an additional place. Because of the way he rejoined. He's not even really forced off the track either. He, he just sort of decides to go that way, in my yeah. opinion, on that one. It's like, yeah, it, it lost the position. Yeah, yeah. See, the game is over, right? Oh, but there's asphalt. Run off. Run off. I'll just... Uh, <laughs> oh, what's this painting? I'm just going to check this out. Oop, up, over the curb, into the lead. Yeah. Which complicates just, everything now, because what happens next? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, I've lost the position, so I'll just come off the brakes and run off the track, because... As we've seen in Brazil, you're allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. 
And Lewis mm. was also nowhere near the apex of turn one. True, he was, but um, he, so he was wide. But that's up to him if he wants to do that. Exactly. He he'd mm. not run anyone off, but he was defending corner two, which in the yeah. lead is very mm. much in the right to do that. Oh yeah, definitely. So um, to me, it's actually poor racecraft. That it's actually lazy and incompetent. Mm. Ooh, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> I'm going to get l- letters in the post from everybody in the Netherlands, and please don't take it personally. I'm just saying it's it's that's Max is very very talented, but that one particular move was very lazy racecraft. Petulant is the word I would use. Oh, well. okay, let's go with that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah I'm not. Um, well, someone's overtaken me. I'm the best. <laughs> yeah. Although Bottas did his best to try and take him out, almost there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he locked up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was close. And even at the first start, Perez almost ran at the back yeah. of him as well. <laughs> oh yes, I forgot about that. Then we get another red flag because Perez, they're, they're free wide going between turn two and three. Uh, you've got Leclerc on the left, Perez in the middle, and, and Alfa, Alfa Tauri on the right, I think. Yeah, it was Gasly. So, Gasly, yep. Come on, Colin, you should know that. Show me. <laughs> I couldn't, remember, I couldn't mm. remember which one it was. Uh, but Perez is in the middle and takes the, the left-hand curve too tight. He assumed that Leclerc was gone. He wasn't gone. Mm contact and uh, he's out of the race yeah he definitely Which, forgot uh, the Ferrari was there in my opinion yeah, yeah. I don't think Abel Clark did anything wrong no. he was... Leclerc was so lucky that the car was robust yes mm. if uh, that was an Alpha Tower it would be in pieces <laughs> 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 yeah it caused another crash though uh, George yeah. Russell slammed on the brakes when he saw it all kicking off and Masbin went in the back of him Russell said it was so inevitable it... that an incident would happen after it did, mm-hmm. mm. um, and I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, it was a scary looking crash, but um, nothing too bad happened from it. But it could have been a lot worse. Thank goodness the halo was there. I felt. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think the reaction of the commentators, the ex racing drivers, they were not impressed with that. No. It also means Haas has got limited parts for yes, the next race with the team with the smallest budget. We've already covered Mick Schumacher potentially racking up the biggest bill this year. This, this oh, race yeah. didn't help. No, that, that's a full new back end for him. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, sorry, it's also wrecked um, Mazepin's chassis again. Has it? Oh, yeah. Oof. So I don't know if they can rebuild that chassis or if they have to do a new one. But he'd already he's on his old chassis because the new chassis that he had that was lighter to be the same as Mix got damaged in a previous race, so he had to go back to his old one that he didn't like, and that's now knackered as well. I bet. Mazepin's regretting buying everybody who works for Haas these amazing Christmas hampers <laughs> because now they need that money for a chassis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the hamper. <laughs> yeah, Haas might be skint, but Mazepin isn't. So if he wants to buy himself a new chassis, I'm sure he could make a donation to the cause. <laughs> yeah. So his dad is like one of the richest men in Russia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, did, I, seen, I saw those gift baskets um, from our, our mutual friend. Cam. Ah, is that where I saw it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. very nice. Just, I, I thought it was a great nice. Yeah, I thought it was a lovely gesture. Yeah, yeah, especially because yeah. everyone's around the world and tricky times. Yeah, yeah pers- very Mick personal. should be able to be doing the same as well to for his engineer to fill the body repairs that caused them. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he'll be on the spanners this week. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so red flag number two. That's yep. point. So this is when we get the negotiations between the FIA and Red Bull because Max is going to get a penalty for the first corner driving off the track to keep the lead. And Michael Massey makes Red Bull an offer if you drop behind Hamilton, but won't refer it to the stewards, which they accept. Uh, but Michael Massey seemed to forget about Ocon at one point. Yeah, uh, he definitely forgot the- about Ocon. <laughs> yes. Red Bull's and like, yeah, we'll take the offer. Brilliant. So uh, Ocon's going to be ahead as well. And he's like, uh, I'll come back to you. Mm. <laughs> so Ocon's good starting pole with Hamilton second and Verstappen third. Bottas ends up like down like sixth or fifth. I can't remember uh, if he just got caught up in that. I think he uh, he, he ran wide, didn't he? He ran wide at turn one. Oh yes, when he locked up and nearly hit Max. That's it. Yeah, so that dropped him back. But Max crucially bolted on the medium tires for this restart, mm. which was restart number. Or start number three. Yeah. Or was it? Yeah. I think it was start number three. So this one, he gets a brilliant launch, fires up mm. the inside of both 
Lewis and Ocon. Lewis has to steer right into Ocon and there's a bit of contact between his front wing, which somehow doesn't break. Um, Max yeah, goes yeah. through. Ocon goes off the track, keeps the lead, but then Max takes the lead into turn three. For me, this is a great move. So I was talking about Probably. how bad yes. the previous one was. This is brilliant. My only slight caveat is it's definitely reliant on two other people seeding and seeing that <laughs> mm-hmm. you're there. It was done with zero compromise, but which is Max's style. That's good. But I also think it's done in a way of, well, I've, if I smash out Hamilton, I'm still going to lead the points. Yeah. yeah. There's no jeopardy for that, for no, Max no. in that one. Yeah. He could do whatever he wanted at that point. Really. But it was a great, Amazing it was a great lunge. Yeah. And Hamilton must have the strongest front wing in the world. Because <laughs> if you watch a slow-mo, yeah. it gets squashed under Ocon's tyre and just pops back up as if nothing happened. Do you know whose front wing doesn't do that? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. Yuki Shinoda's. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, uh, Yuki. So he tries to overtake Vettel and outside of turn one, goes a bit deep. Vettel takes the normal line because I think he's assumed that Ocon's w- and Ocon eh, Snowdas went off on a runoff. Yeah. But he's tried to take the corner and he's tagged the back of Vettel. I thought it was I thought I I thought it was a fifty fifty. Yeah. But, yeah, but, I thought it was unlucky to get a penalty for that. He's already been penalised, he's lost his front wing. <laughs> and then <laughs> had to reverse. I thought he was nearly gonna reverse in the wall at one point. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> yeah, so did I. I was like, oh my word, what? but I, the the camera angle didn't show the proper perspective but or depth but the if you watch Vettel's on board which is on the Formula 1 YouTube channel of the best of on board thing mm. like it's fairly obvious that there's going to be an Alfa Tari there in my opinion mm. yeah you can see him that he's going to be on the outside so so he can't he can't vanish I'm, I can only assume that Vettel thinks he was uh, running off the track but he wasn't yeah, yeah. and I actually I think Yuki tried to back out at the last second or tenth of a second which perhaps exaggerated it a bit because they would have been further alongside then, and it would have been more of a fifty-fifty. Mm, that's um, true. And then, it, yeah, yeah, I, I just don't agree with the five seconds. But you know, ultimately, Vettel lost some time, but then Yuki lost his front wing, and ruined his race. So mm. there's no need for the five seconds. Yeah, and that brought out the think the first VSC. It did. We then get two more for Debbie. I, I can't, I can't say when they were because I was just lost at this point. Oh, uh, yeah. Alonso has a spin. My oh, yes, yeah. Then lap 26, I think, because the second VSC. Kimmy goes up inside of Vettel in the turn one, but um, nice. Sebastian comes back around outside of two. Oh, so nice. Which gives mm-hmm. him the inside for free. Nice. There's a bit of squeezing towards turn three. Kimmy's on the outside. Not nice. Ex- expect Raikkonen right <laughs> just to back out then <laughs> he doesn't he just tr- he tries no. to take the corner there's no with space Vettel for Kimi at all no. no then there's contact Kimi was his front wing and Seb's side pod and four is gubbed basically and just sheds yeah. debris over the track yeah, surprised at that with Kimi silly. yeah it was obvious what was going to happen <laughs> maybe he yeah. just doesn't care should have been a penalty there no yeah, he's already true. been damaged but if we're going by the Shinoda rules, then... Well, yeah, that's definitely much more of a penalty than Shinoda was. I think so. Yeah. Mm. It was just... Uh, yeah. Hey, I don't know how to drive yeah. a Formula 1 car. It just didn't look good. No. No. Yeah. So, I don't know if they're on speaking terms, though. Badminton buddies, as uh, David Croft always <laughs> calls them. I mean, does Kimmy even speak to anyone anyway? I think, think Seb's probably his only friend on the grid. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone else he ever speaks to. No, I think he gets on with Jim Nazi, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, there's a good little video where they're driving the uh, Giulietta Quadrifoglio GTAM around the track. Clearly, it's before first practice and they don't know where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen that pop up on YouTube. I need to watch that. Uh, so, yeah, so there's various VSCs for various bits of debris. Uh, Hamilton's about one, one and a half seconds behind at this point. Mm. He... Uh, He's gaining for sector two and three. Max is gaining for sector one. Lap well, thirty-seven, and Hamilton gets from DRS range, going down the main straight. Tries to go around the outside of Max. Um, Max then doesn't break in too deep. No, for into no. turn one, mm. loses the rear end. No, no, no. Has to catch it, and both of them go off. It doesn't go too deep. That almost makes it sound like a, an incident. 
It just didn't <laughs> stop for the corner. No. Mm. There is no chance in hell he was ever making that corner at that speed. No, and he knew it. No. So it's just another incident where he's, I think he's deliberately, yeah, not as blatant as Brazil, but he's deliberately mm. ran Hamilton off to Correct. keep the lead. Correct. Yeah. No, I agree and with that one. This, this is what's frustrating me. Like In Brazil, I wasn't annoyed that he tried it. I was annoyed that the FIA did nothing about it. Mm-hmm. But now, now I'm annoyed he's trying it. Because that's twice he's been off track to keep the lead at this race, at this point. And it's not needed because he's he's a good enough driver not to not to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was just silly. I know they yeah. both went off the track, but Lewis went off because he had no choice. So. That was an argument on the internet, wasn't it? Mm. Oh, you can't say anything because Hamilton went off as well, apparently. Yeah, because when I first watched it, I did think, well, they're both off the track, so maybe he doesn't have to give the place to him. But then when I actually used my eyes again, <laughs> you you could see why. Did you take did you take off your Dutch flag sunglasses? <laughs> uh, but yeah, the replays were very clear. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's the FIA I think immediately after ordered them to give the place to Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Which then caused the big talking point of the race at the end of lap thirty seven. Mm. Coming towards final corner, which I think is corner twenty seven. Yes, yep. Um Yep. Max is told to give the place back to Hamilton strategically. Mm-hmm. So, coming towards the end of the straight, he slows down to the right of the track. So, there's a gap on the left. Uh, but then, when Hamilton gets close, he really slams on the anchors. Kind of wiggles into the middle of the track. And Hamilton runs into the back of him. Mm. And it's the second Hamilton touches him, he fours it and, and shoots mm. off. So, it just looks absolutely awful and yeah. if he had, if he is trying to give the place back that's not how you yield a place safely you don't slam on the brakes you move offline and lift off he didn't break christian told us <laughs> yeah colin come on i apologize <laughs> when, yeah. when a car suddenly slows 80 miles an hour <laughs> at about 10 meters i thought yeah you must have applied the brakes i can't believe they tried that defense though he definitely didn't break we have the uh evidence of that <laughs> But he clearly did. Yeah, he's he's obviously trying to let Hamilton pass mm. so he can get the DRS. So that's why he slammed on the brake so early. But yeah, you don't do that. That's not how you let somebody pass safe. And he's wig- he wiggles in the middle of the track when Hamilton gets close. Yeah, the radio call to him before the move was let Hamilton pass, but do it strategically. Mm-hmm. Mm. And he took that very literally, as in yeah. my strategy is to take him out of the race. Well. Yep. I don't think he deliberately meant for Hamilton to run into him, to be fair. But neither of them wanted to pass that DRS line first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. I um, think Hamilton is complicit because he's also backing up because yeah. he does. He knows what Max is doing. It's just then the but final breaking, isn't it? It's like, for me, Hamilton made one massive mistake in that. Yeah. And that is, if he wants to slow down, that's fine. But why did he slow down behind Max? Why not move to that's the a side good point. That's a good and point. still slow down? Because he mm. was putting himself in harm's way. Yeah. Not but to say that... They, I'm not saying it's Lewis's fault that it happened, but he could have also avoided it. Yeah. Uh, I guess if you put your, put yourself in Lewis's shoes, you've just had three VSCs mm-hmm. in the last ten laps. The guy's taken you off twice already and almost hit you with his overtake mo- move. <laughs> yeah. He's got about a second or so to assess what's going on. I think he does realise what's going on yeah, so towards the end, that he's trying to get the DRS. But by that point, he's right up his backside, you're right, and he hits him. Mm. But I think the f- initial, when he comes across Max Sloan, he doesn't realise what's happening. Yeah. So he's trying to assess. Because there was space initially for him to go past, because he does mm-hmm. it the next lap. But it's when Max goes really slow and wiggles into the middle of the track, it's when he, he condemns himself to... Yeah. To the FIA stewards. So yeah, I thought that was pretty poor. It was oh, pretty yeah. poor. So the, the Lewis wasn't completely innocent, you're right. But I thought it was pretty poor from Max. Mm. Yeah, it was poor from the FIA as well. It's clear if you're going to give the instruction to one car that you're going to let them pass, you've got to give it to both simultaneously because yeah. Lewis Lewis hadn't got the message. I just he's getting the message as he hits them. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's wild that they were able to continue. Yeah. True. So, 
Max is then told to give the place back again, mm-hmm. but it takes him five laps. So lap yeah. 42, he lifts off again, lets Lewis pass, going in towards final corner. As soon as Lewis gets past, though, he floors it, sends it up the inside, takes the lead back and gives himself DRS, <laughs> which is yeah. cheeky. And also the FIA don't like it because 15 seconds later he gets a five second penalty for not giving the place back. So they're obviously not impressed with what he's been doing. Mm. I thought it was ingenious, but there's been a previous incidents where you you still get penalised for doing it. So it's one of those. I don't know if it's officially a rule. I think that you can't right. do it, but it it's yeah. definitely not in the spirit. In the spirit, yeah, yeah, because that, that's that's what I say. I don't think it's an actual rule. Because mm. I remember after the Lewis Hamilton one was spoken about a few times at Spa. With ranking him back in the day, the clarification was if you go off track, gain an advantage, you can't then over, like gain it back into the next corner. Mm. This slightly different because it's not immediately after Max went off track, but he's still trying to redress a situation. So it's probably going to be in the rule. They've got to write a a rule that you can't attack into the next corner, or if they want this to happen, don't write the rule. But <laughs> obviously yeah. they've given they've, they've given them the penalty immediately afterwards. So obviously they have an interpretation where they don't think you should be able to do that. Yeah, just make it clear for everyone what can and can't be done. Mm. So five second penalty. The Max keeps the lead, but then the next lap, he lets Lewis go again, even though he's not been told to. Lewis goes up the inside, then drives right to the outside line of the track and pushes Max off. So they're both at it in that respect, I think. Yeah. 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 And Mercedes get a radio call from Michael Massey saying that's on the borderline of mm. black and white flag. The only thing I would say is when you watch the Max on board, Hamilton's kind of already there and Max is trying to go, I don't know. Yeah, the breaking zone's already happened, but it, it definitely mm. is Hamilton forcing him wide and all that. I'm not defending Lewis in that respect. It was slightly dodgy. Mm-hmm. And so Lewis then wins because Max's tires are going off on the medium. Mm-hmm. Lewis then, with a missing end plate on his front wing, starts pumping in fastest laps. Yeah, which was incredible. I thought. Yeah, amazing. How do you, how do you do that with a broken wing? On fairly lap old hard tyres. Yeah. On a track that demands good turning. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. So he uh, he takes a win, basically. Bottas is fighting back. He gets past Ricardo. I think they both traded places a couple of times. Just quickly <laughs> on that. He, he got past Ricardo, but Ricardo then got the DRS. So the next time around, Bottas deliberately didn't overtake him when they were both playing the similar game to Max and Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. It actually goes back to what we were saying in Brazil, where the DRS detection zone is actually set up so you can defend back again. Mm. Yeah. I suppose that is kind of clever in that it's, it's going to create some racing, but anyway, Bottas was wise to it after the first one. Ocon still sitting in third, quite happily, quite quietly. Um, Bottas closes up, final lap, lap 50, tries to overtake at turn one, round outside, but runs wide. So Ocon keeps the place. Valtteri is able to recover. Towards the end of the lap, he's fallen. Ocon into the final corner. Gets a good exit, floors it, and just manages to take third place on the line by mm. point something stupid of a second. Yeah. <laughs> I think Ocon yeah, ran out of electricity, didn't he? Yeah. He did. Also, um, a part of his floor fell off with two laps to go. Oh, really? And yeah. Well, because he had contact not once but twice in this race. Oh, he was squeezed he, against the wall, wasn't he? Yeah, the very the first start of sixteen, oh, um, yeah. he was pushed into the wall by Sonoda, not deliberately, but the, and apparently that damaged the floor slightly, and then in the contact with Hamilton later on, that damaged it, and then it fell off, whatever the part was, yeah. and caused him to lose time for the last couple of laps. Interesting. Which is why he was so upset, I think. Because if that hadn't have happened, he probably would have stayed there. But very good, nonetheless, from Ocon. And the F1 social media team was right there. Let's cue the 2017 clip with Stroll and Bottas at Baku. Mm. Very <laughs> reminiscent. One thing I was going to say is, towards the end of the race, Alonso pitted for fresh softs, didn't he? He was outside the top he? 10. And so it was clearly to try and get the point away from Hamilton. And I thought, oh, that's weird. That's a bit interesting. <laughs> I said the word interesting far too many times this podcast. I apologise. That's a bit well, dick dastardly. 
it is also to get the point for his own team as they're in that fight with Alpha Tauri, I suppose. But do you get the point if you finish outside the top 10? Oh, no, no you don't. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, and he was like, well done. Yeah. He had no chance of points. So he just went, I'm going to stick some fresh so, yeah. softs on with four laps left. Ignore that then. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. But <laughs> I, he didn't I was... get it, thankfully. Yeah. So, uh, Verstappen was wanting to pit because of the, but the penalty he couldn't. But I was mm-hmm. I was looking at the 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 lineup at the time and I was like, Sonoda is sitting like 13, 14. Why did I not try it with him? But then I remembered it's Sonoda and he'd end up upside down. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he struggled from past his lap. So. <laughs> but I was surprised that Red Bull Alpha Tower didn't true. try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Ernest came out in a set of sauce. Because, uh, yeah, as you say. All level going into the final round because of that fastest lap point. Mm. We're stepping ahead on count back because he's had nine wins to Hamilton's eight. And your man Giovinazzi got two points. Yeah, you see, different class. <laughs> there was one other thing that was annoying on that last lap, though. Mm. Don't know if you saw the same thing, but we saw Bottas just passing Ocon, uh-huh. but we saw none of the battle leading up to it. No. Because the director thought, let's watch all of Lewis's last lap. Yeah, it was weird. Though, regardless <laughs> yeah. of the fighting going on yeah, behind, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't just um, Bottas and Ocon. I think it was it Sainz and Leclerc were uh, yeah. trading places on the last lap, but we saw none of it. Sainz and Leclerc had a great battle all mm. race. Mm. I felt on, on most of the second half of the race, but they, yeah. and I swear they cut away when they were like side by side at one point. They ran off. Yeah, at yeah. turn one. I think Leclerc get to place by running away that turn one mm. he did but, but they let him pass again afterwards Sites' his radio message yeah. is funny for that <laughs> it's just like he has to leave me past immediately <laughs> 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 oh he said oh come on Charles don't do that that was it that's good but do, I've been trying to find the Ferrari fight again but it's not on any of the highlights or the best on boards and anything yeah weird no. it's, like, it's like they're trying to cover it up <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah. Uh, anyway they've, they've got third now haven't they basically yeah. Yeah. Daniel Ricardo got fifth, but I think I don't think it's enough for them now. Um Ocon's fourth place pretty much confirms Alpha Alpha not Alpha Terry. Alpine. I've got too many A's in my mouth. Alpine uh pretty much claims fifth. Now. Which I think I shared a picture graphic with both of you that they basically had three good races and that's got them to position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> completely. Alpha Tari was by far the quicker car this year, but it didn't work out. Hmm. Only having one card in the points for half the season. Yeah, that doesn't help. That's what hurt them. Aston Martin's seventh. Um, Alfa Romeo's now only ten points behind Williams. So it's, uh, it's all to play for. That's on. And uh, the Constructors' Championship's all, almost over as well. The Mercedes are 28 points ahead of Red Bull. Yeah, it's going to so. take a miracle for that not to happen. Yeah. One race to go. Tied on points, first time since 1974. <laughs> do Haas get a point in the final race? No. No, <laughs> no. no but if they do, it would be good. Yeah, yeah, it would be good for them. But will they be on the grid? That's the other question. I can't see it happening. Question. I think the team will be on the grid. Whether it's a Haas team is another matter. <laughs> That's true. Uh, first race, 10 seconds for Max for the slowdown incident, was it? Mm, Erratic yes. breaking? Yes. Which was it? Fifteen seconds in total, then, because they mm-hmm. still had the five seconds yeah, yeah, yeah. on, and two penalty points. Yeah, there you go. Um, he walked off the the podium was uh, extravagant, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it all just felt a bit limp and lame because Max walked off. I think he's saying that Hamilton wasn't going to look at him because Hamilton immediately picked up the champagne or the Hamilton, water. Yeah, there was no eye contact and there. turned turned away from him and just spread Bottas. Yeah, so I think Max just went ah. Right. I didn't watch the post race press conference because I know they did have to sit together afterwards. No, I didn't see that either. But I did watch the driver of the day message, which is in New York. So Max got driver of the day. Why? Why? So <laughs> if you are listening out there and you press Max driver of the day, I want to know why and I want a written letter. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he said, uh, so his team said to him, someone's got your back, if not the FIA, it's the fans. So, which you know it's the whole debate of the team obviously has to be behind Max but it encourages bad habits so in the mm. heat of the moment yeah. of course then, he, then Max says yeah thanks to the fans for having a clear uh, mindset about racing 
because what happened today is unbelievable. I mean, I agree. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. You were the unbelievable <laughs> part, for the yeah. most part. That was one. That's yeah. This is what I have get frustrated with. It it can drive fear and stuff in this championship. He's exactly. deciding to exactly. do things that he doesn't need to do, yeah. mm. and I think it's because he's on the back foot. Because it looks like Mercedes have a slightly quicker car, although Max would have taken pole here. I just um, think Hamilton stepped up a bit. Yeah, yeah. When it's come to it, but we'll see. Uh, next track is rubbish, but they have made changes, <laughs> so we don't know. Yes, mm. the changes look good. To be fair, yeah, I think it's just like oh, everyone's saying. All the neutrals or people who don't really watch Formula One and everything. Wow, I'm going to watch that fin- finale. Amazing. And I'm thinking, oh, God, but it's Yas Marina. Because mm. <laughs> they've changed a lot of it as well. They haven't just changed the two corners that have been completely reprofiled. They've done a lot of little changes as well. Oh, good. I'll, t- I'll take your word for it on that. I've not really looked properly. Well, the hairpin now has a long straight into it. Good. It doesn't have the little chicane first. Yep. Um... The chicane at the end of the second DRS zone has been removed for a long... It's kind of like a hairpin, but it's a longer one. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, but that means then potentially overtaking into the tighter part afterwards. Mm. And then the series of 90-degree yep. um, turns after that have been changed slightly, so they're no longer 90 degrees. So that you, there's more of a flow to them. Mm. Right. So it does look quite interesting. I'm glad there'll be changes, so well done for doing that. What was it? Yes. Yeah. It's been, of, say, 10 or 15 seconds a lot quicker. Mm. 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 Whether or not they work for the actual racing, we don't know yet, yeah. but it's it's a start. Mm. Also, you know we've been saying how we don't we don't love crowd shots. Why do we get crowd shots? Mm. But I do love a Toto shot <laughs> when he's uh, smashing yes. in his headphones. Especially in slow motion. Yeah, it was in slow motion, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they got destroyed. Yeah. Ah, oh, yes. Do you think about that for the camera as well? No. Mm, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think he's just slightly mental. <laughs> yeah. I just love, I do love how he's really, I know mm. it's annoying to hear Toto and Horner all the time, but what I get from Toto is a, is a genuine passion. Yeah. And what I get from Horner is, he's just Helmut Marco's mouthpiece. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Helmut Marco, I think, has been claiming since Saudi Arabia that um, the stewards are biased against Red Bull oh, and giving out harsher Helmut. penalties. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Our, our best friend, Helmut, still at it. It's his <laughs> job, <Yeah>. but... <sighs> News update. 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 Got a bit of British touring car news. Take mm. it away, Nick. Well, actually, Colin, do you know what TBL stands for? Uh, touring British Licence. <laughs> Not far away, I think it's Tocker huh? BTCC licenses. So yeah. actually, it's Tocker yeah. BTCC license that uh, L, basically. Yeah, a TBTCC L. Yeah. <laughs> and these are licenses that teams own as an asset to guarantee them entry. Now in NASCAR and in supercars under the new ownership in Australia, they have a similar license system, but the teams get paid to appear for the races. But that does not happen in the British Touring Car Championship. Because those championships are pay TV, so so actually by turning up, they, sh- they in theory have broken even regardless, and then your sponsors go on top, which is why all every most drivers in those series are paid for. But uh, anyway, mm. I digress. Um, <laughs> so Toka has revealed the license list, hasn't it, Nick? They have indeed. I mean, it's quite a surprise as we know we'll have a full thirty-two car grid for next year, mm. despite them trying to reduce the number of cars. Apparently. Alan Gow said the demand for the BTCC has never been greater. Clearly, mm. this also means I failed to achieve my long-standing aim of reducing the grid size. <laughs> Whilst that remains the goal going forward, Did you actually see admittedly, that? Did you actually it's see a nice that? problem yeah. to have. Yeah, that's a direct quote. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I, I'm going to call out on this. Apologies, we're going to get no favours here, but I do feel like his goal to reduce the grid size may be genuine but it was also a well-timed PR thing for when the grid started to reduce down a bit um, True. but now there is demand again we've got the 32 cars again but anyway by the by the main thing is happy days where in an inflationary period coming off the back of COVID and we've got full cars in the British touring car mm. grid which is not cheap especially when new hybrid systems need to be released yeah 
So, wonderful. So, what part of the big changes in the license season? I've got one. I've got, Nick's got one. Did you miss out? Miss out? Oh, okay. sorry. It took oh, me a moment. Bad joke there. Ignore that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Collins just said, what are the big changes? And I'm not going to say Yeah. That. The main changes are the fact that three of the TBLs that Toka had have been given out to other teams on a one season loan. Whether or not that stays that way is another matter, but one has gone to Team Dynamics, so they now have three TBLs. One has gone to Speedworks, or Toyota, and they have three. And one has gone to BTC Racing, who already had three, so they now have four TBLs. Wild that, because BTC Racing, not known for their uh, number of sponsors. That's, yeah. Mm. Uh, but anyway, it might be a scenario where the owner just wants to do it in which case I would do the same mm-hmm. if I had some funds yeah. I think it's important to state as well oh yeah so Aidan Moffat racing is still late brackets laser tools still have two well they, yep. they only ever had one before oh yeah I just they, said they that they've acquired one yes so somewhere along the lines BMR's TBL mm-hmm. has gone around maybe Aidan Moffat's got it but we're not quite sure right I believe it is BMR's that Aidan Moffat racing has purchased yeah, it makes sense looking at the list. If those three teams you mentioned have them loaned from Toka, yeah. Then the only other one that's interesting, I think, is Bordley Motorsport still have two. Yes, still has two. Sorry, get my grammar right there. Um, but just to be clear, Colin, just because these licenses have been attributed to these teams doesn't mean that these teams will be running the cars. Hmm. I mean, I do think yes. it does mean that if, in the case of the lo- season loan ones, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Bordeaux Motorsport, there's nothing to say they will actually enter a team. No, mm. and Carl Baldley is supposedly not going to be driving this year, but I think that mm. came from Tim Harvey. It did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he has two TBLs, one of which was on loan to Team Hard last year. Yes, and so, so that, Team they only Hard... They technically have three. Yeah, exactly. They've only got three, so sorry, I cut you in there, that was very rude. No, that's okay. So maybe you would assume one goes back to Team Hard again. Well, but you don't know that. <laughs> There's a bit of a debate at the moment over... I forgot his name. Jake Hill. <laughs> I was going to say Josh Hill. Um, Jake Hill and Nick Hamilton apparently are both sponsored by Rocket. Mm. And apparently only one of them will be sponsored by Rocket. So if that is the case, Hamilton may no longer have his drive. Mm. Um, because mm. you presume they would go with Jake Hill. Oh, I don't know. I'm sure. A, I think I'm sure a phone call to his brother would secure some fun. I think there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, yeah, but we'll have to see how it, it shakes out. There's basically been no driver announcements other than the ones already agreed, mm-hmm. which is um, Goff and Taylor Smith at Hard. I think. So everything yes. is to play for. Of course, don't there's forget. Other ones. West Surrey's still looking for at least one after Oliphant has taken a sabbatical. Mm-hmm. Uh, Power Max, have they fallen out with Jason Plato? I. Don't know, is it a fact? But from what Tim Harvey was saying about him leaving the track and mm-hmm. stuff like this, you, you can't think that's going to continue, right? No, well, there's many, many rumours, but we just don't know what's yeah. true and what's rumour. Um, in other news, I've won some Jack Brutel merchandise. Ooh. Ooh. I competed in the Jersey E-Rally eSports competition. That was very terrible. Uh, <laughs> but it was for charity, and uh, a donation got you a raffle. And I've, It's not arrived yet, but yeah. That's nice. So I'm I'm his big fan now. <laughs> and uh, hashtag Jack Patel. Watch there we go. Mm. And uh, in other news, uh, not news, but the British touring cars. Some of the stars and cars were used on a Top Gear piece that wasn't used in the episode, but was used on the Top Gear mm. YouTube channel, where they're trying to show their race tactics. And Adam Morgan's got a whiteboard, and it's good to see their cars on the BBC in a way on YouTube. But yeah, yes, yeah, so I got to watch that today after you uh, yeah. told me about that, and that was very interesting I think that would have been much better to be in the main show I think so yeah um, they were trying to show him how to like force a car wide block dive play oh play oh play oh <laughs> yeah he wasn't there by the looks of it <laughs> I probably would have been the best choice for all of these <laughs> it was Morgan Shedden uh, Sutton and Butcher Hamilton, and Hamilton Morgan yeah. Butcher I feel like there was someone else as well but I'm not sure Playo still doesn't have a fifth year contract line there, does he? What do you mean? If it's, he's, he's maybe still not got that line about what's why he didn't do it. He's still waiting on that coming back. Fifth gear contract. Oh, he's in the new series of Fifth Gear TV show, if that was what you meant. 
Is it coming back? It's this just year? it's already started. It's like two two weeks ah. in. It's called Fifth Gear Recharge, and it only does hybrid or electric vehicles now. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um, but at the episode one, they're like, "Here's a Lamborghini Sian, which is the most mild and mild, mild, mild hybrid you can possibly do." <laughs> um, just so billionaires can buy it and think they're green, and still have the Lamborghini Aventador in drag. And so it's yeah, it's all right. Rory Reed is a presenter on it now, and oh, Plato's right. still oh, yeah. still there, but trying out the EVs. <laughs> mm. he's, he's just yeah. yeah. Just seems wrong with that then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It doesn't seem a good fit. Yeah. He still watches. It's still the same. But. Mm. So, one round lay. It's Abu Dhabi. Straight shoot out for the title. Mm. Predictions? Uh, Max to take out Hamilton. Max to be champion. <laughs> but I've, I've batted all the way along to say in the last half of the season that my vote would still be the belief of Hamilton to win it. So, that in seriousness, I think that's what will happen. But... Um, Oh my word! The number of times Prost and Senna is going to be mentioned is going to be almost intolerable. Oh yeah, yeah. It's Schumacher and Hell, Schumacher and Villeneuve. Oh yeah, yeah all of them. Yeah. Mind you, we just mentioned it, so we're we're part of that problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nick, um, well, I said for Stappen last time, so I kind of had to stick with it. But I said that because he had a lead; he no longer has mm. the lead. Although, come back, kind of does. Yeah, because if. You know, if neither of them finish, he is champion. That is an advantage because it's the mindset yes. when he doesn't overtaking and attacking. Mm-hmm. However, again, we're presuming that the track is suited for overtaking and attacking. Well, yeah, mm. and also that they're going to be close to each other on track. Because mm. it's going to be interesting because on the old layout, Max dominated last year, mm. but then Lewis was just coming back for COVID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, You'd think that the long, the more straights and faster corners would benefit Hamilton, but then Red Bull were actually pretty quick in Saudi Arabia, so yeah, it's going to be a toss up. Mm. I just, I've just got that feeling after what we've seen in the past few weeks that at least one of them won't be finishing. Yeah, um, because it's clear that Max will not compromise mm-hmm. when he's racing wheel to wheel. The teammates will have a big thing to play in it, I think. Yeah, and Lewis had a little bite back at Max towards the end of the race, so is his is his patience up? Is he going to... Because mm. they've come together already, Silverstone and Monza, but is, is Hamilton now willing to fight a bit dirty? It's going to be interesting. But yeah, you're right. That, that running into turn one with Perez and Bottas behind him. Mm. Someone snatches a break there. Um, it's it's going to be interesting. Well, Lewis has been talking up Bottas. I noticed in the last few races, and he's constantly saying about how he's been doing really well, and it's it's great for him. And I, I don't know if that is genuinely how he feels, or if he's actually trying to g up Bottas. Or the latter, I think. Mm. But yeah, I think that he Bottas and Perez could play a big part, and well, Bottas Perez won't. probably more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because if he can get in amongst it, I mean, say for instance, if um, Hamilton's first and Bottas is second and Verstappen's third, he's got no way to get at Hamilton. But we'll have to see. The famous Valtteri Bottas defence will be tested again. I can, <laughs> yeah, oh God. <laughs> I can maybe envisage actually it's going to go down to who gets the fastest lap or something weird. The maths don't work on that, do they? No, no, I was just thinking that, but you know. Oh, no, I regretted that instantly. <laughs> it's whoever is higher up in the order wins. Mm. Yeah. Winner yeah. takes it all, well, or, or crush it. Yeah, well. Yeah. I... Oh, sorry, Colin, you go. No, on you go. I was going to say, I mean, um, any of them could finish 10th if the other doesn't finish. Mm. And mm. they will take it. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. Just... That is exciting. Mm I just hope it's clean. I'm going to have to watch it live. I might have to buy it now. Pass. <laughs> I just hope it's clean. Yeah. So it's a, because it's been getting dirty recently and I, it's, it's actually kind of putting me off. I'm, I just want this over now. Um, so I hope it's clean and I hope it's a fair fight. Because I do, I do think it takes a bit of shine off if it isn't. I mean, there is always that mark against Schumacher for his mm. yeah. move on hill, his attempt on Villeneuve, and Senna, there's a mark on him where he 
Quite if you no longer go for cost. a gap, etc. Et yeah. yeah. So th- there's marks on them, and I think it would be a shame if Max won the title and there's a mark on him for that. Or if Lewis mm-hmm. won the title and there's a mark on him for that. Yeah. Because I think both of them have driven well enough this year that they, they don't deserve mm. to, to have that. Oh, the ultimate oh. irony would be if Hamilton makes a dodgy move. I know. Mm-hmm. It could very could happen. That's what I'm thinking. If his patience is gone with Max and he's just not going to yield as well anymore, then it's it's going to be a mess by the time they get to that first chicane. Well, I think it's going to be exciting, no? Uh, well, no, I'm going. To, I think it's going to be really boring. <laughs> yeah. Whatever happens, it'll so, be boring. One o'clock this Sunday, I think the race start is. UK time is that? I believe so. One o'clock UK is time. Earlier than normal. Interesting. Uh, it's not my one o'clock, isn't it? It's been two o'clock lately, I think. A lot of yeah. places. I mean, it moves around whenever it's around the world, but yeah, this one was at half five. Yeah, like really screwed mm. me up. Formula One. Tune in at five o'clock, and David Cough still gabbering. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> oh, don't! That's going to be terrible when the last. He's going to be putting out stats that don't matter. This is the seventeenth <laughs> time someone has locked up at turn yeah. five in the last three years. Because <laughs> I love a good stat, but not the ones that have no relevance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got at least one more episode of the podcast to go this year with the final round in Abu Dhabi this weekend. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you then. Can't wait. <laughs> I can't make any else I love doing this podcast, yeah. so uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. Like, like, review, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, I'm going to put BTCC into the title of this podcast again <laughs> to get the downloads <laughs> back up. Because clearly <laughs> people love the BTCC. Yeah. So, so we'll see you next week um, for what might be our last episode of the year. So thank you again for listening. Bye bye. Merry Christmas. Bye bye. Hey, Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad.